you've been playing D&D wrong. It's been a while since I've posted as I've been working 12 hour night shifts in a factory for the past year, but fortunately I've had an opportunity to start a new career and I've been playing a lot more D&D lately, which has inspired me to make this video. I'm going to show you how I play D&D, and keep in mind this is all virtual. If you want to play in person, you should probably invest in some battle maps and figures, although all you really need are some dice and your imagination. Almost everyone plays video games and is used to visual representation, so I do my best to provide that for my players. Now let's get started. A lot of people use Roll20, but I don't like it near as as much as what I use. Plus you have to pay $50 or $100 a year to unlock all the fancy options and get rid of ads. As a player you're going to need a Steam and D&D Beyond account, as well as 20 bucks. As a DM like me, you're going to need Steam, a D&D Beyond account, and $65 or more, depending on what content you want to purchase on D&D Beyond. Keep in mind only one person in your friend group needs to purchase books on D&D Beyond, but they will also need to pay $4.58 a month to make that content shareable to everyone in the campaign. I find it pretty annoying seeing as how I've already spent an arm and a leg on the physical books, but it really is a helpful resource that makes playing and keeping track of your character sheets and magic items way easier. If you want to save money, you can very easily find all the books for 5e for free online, but you're on your own there. If you don't have money, ask your mom, but hopefully she'll tell you to get a job, you lazy bastard. Now take your hopefully hard-earned money and buy Tabletop Simulator for 20 bucks. This is the bread and butter of the virtual tabletop experience, and as you can see, I've spent over 3,800 hours playing it as of shooting this video. There are other virtual tabletops like Tailspot but to me it seems the more these programs try to offer, the jankier and more restricting the experience is. I'll show you some gameplay examples as well as my workshop uploads later in this video. If you're a DM, you might want to make your own maps, but you can also save your money and download maps for free online. I prefer to give my world and battle maps a personal touch, but I also am frequently infected by the world building bug. I recommend buying Dungeon Painter Studio for $15. I've made countless battle maps and tokens using this program and it will most likely require its own video at a later date. For world maps, some people use Incarnate, but the free plan is rather restrictive and your only other options are to pay $5 a month or $25 a year. I have mixed feelings about Dungeon Fog as I signed up for the beta a long time ago and it was marketed as a revolutionary battle and world map tool, but I find it to be rather janky and have had it crash on me multiple times. I recommend Wonder Draft. It may be a little pricey at 30 bucks, but you own it for life, no subscription. I absolutely love this program, and like DPS, it will require its own video at a later date. I recommend having at least two monitors so you don't have to alt tab every five seconds, having TTS on your main screen and D&D Beyond on your secondary, as well as Discord, YouTube, or ChatGPT for quick reference and inspiration is essential. The first thing you'll want to do is press configuration and go to sound to turn this damn main menu music off, although I haven't listened to this in a long time. As a player, you'll hit join, and if your Steam friend is hosting, their game should show up at the top in green. Otherwise, you can search the host name or server name. You can also join a random server without a password. As a DM, you'll hit create and multiplayer, although when you're preparing sessions, you'll want to select single player instead. Type in your server name, select public or friends, and enter your password, unless you want randos joining you, which you may want and I have done in the past and met some cool players in the process. When you have all that done, hit create server. This game's pop-up is asking you what table you would like to load. By default you have classic games such as dominoes and checkers, but you'll want a table suitable for running D&D, and this is a good time to talk about the workshop. You can access it through Steam or in-game by selecting Games, Workshop, then Browse. I use the Kraken Table by Lily as it gives you more than enough space, including drawers for each player with their own area to stash their dice and tokens. Do yourself a favor and subscribe to all of my workshop uploads, which you can do with the click of a button by going to my collections and hitting subscribe to all on my SJ76 D&D 5e tokens. I have a few other uploads on my workshop, such as the Cypher System, Star Wars Tokens, and some custom battle maps. After you've subscribed to my collection, go back to your table and select Games, Workshop, SJ76 D&D Table. When you first join the server as a player, you'll get to choose your color, which will assign you to a location with your name on the table. You can always change your color by clicking on your name at the top right. If these names ever get in the way, you can use the Gizmo tool or F8 to select the box and move them to where you like. As the DM, you'll want to choose the black color, as it allows you to see through hidden or fog of war areas created with the zone tool or F3 and allows you to read GM only notes on objects in the game. To spawn in objects, change the table or add a panoramic background, select objects and components for default objects and to import custom ones, or select tables to change your table, but I wouldn't recommend that since we're using the Kraken table. Select backgrounds to choose from some default backgrounds or upload your own, just keep in mind it has to be a high resolution panorama. Finally you can select saved objects where you will find all the objects you have saved and I'll show you how to do 
that now. When you're running a game, your druid might summon some beasts. So go to Games, Workshop, and search Beast to find my beasts upload. Click the Options button at the top right of the upload and select Search. Then type in whatever beast they are summoning. I have most, if not all of them covered. Drag the token from the workshop onto the table. Simply click and hold the token to manipulate it. You can hit F while holding to flip it and Alt F to rotate it 180 degrees, although I normally just use Q and E and you can also use the mouse wheel. Control C and Control V are used to copy and paste objects and Control X cuts them. You can hit R to raise the token and L to lock it in place. To move it while locked, you can either unlock it or use the gizmo tool. Right clicking the objects allows you to access the toggles such as lock and tooltip, which toggles if the name and description can be seen by default when the object is hovered over. The GM box can only be read by the player with the black color. To change the object color and opacity, select color tint. I like to color my tokens pink when they are bloodied, red when they are dead, black when they've been burned, green when they've been poisoned or covered in acid, and blue when they are underwater. If the token has gone invisible or burrowed underground, you can bring the opacity slider all the way down, but you may want to take the token off the board so your players can't see it at all. All that to say, if you want to save a specific object or group of objects, select or drag select them and right click one and hit save object, which will allow you to save the objects or objects under any name you wish. To bring them out again, go to saved objects and drag them onto the table. You can hold tab to use the line tool which measures distance. My default battle map is 100 by 60, which if you're using 5 foot increments is 500 feet by 300 feet. You can draw on the table by selecting the draw tool or F2 and choosing your color. You can increase the brush size by hitting the plus or minus keys. There is the pin, line, box, and circle tool to draw with. You can use the eraser or hit the trash can button to erase all drawn lines. To add text, you can hit F7 or select the text tool and click on the table where you want the text. With the text tool selected, you can edit the text, increase the font size, change the color, or delete it, but you'll have to use the gizmo tool to move it. Hitting F1 will bring you back to your grab tool, which is what you'll be using most of the time. Hitting the space bar will center your camera over your color area, but you can use Control 0 to redefine this area. You can use the search method I showed you to bring any of the tokens or vehicles from my workshop uploads onto the table, but you may want to consider saving specific objects you use frequently. To create a custom token, I'd recommend designing your character on Hero Forge, taking a screenshot, saving the image, and uploading it to Token Stamp. You can just as easily find some random artwork online or have it generated by AI such as Stable Diffusion. In game, go to Components, Custom, and drag the token onto the table. In the image bar, click the folder and locate your token downloaded from Token Stamp. Double click or hit Open, and when you see this pop-up, you must select Cloud or no one will be able to see what you've loaded. Hit Upload again, then Import. If you're uploading multiple tokens from a copied one, you'll get this pop-up asking you to update. Always hit cancel or all the tokens you've copied will take the form of whatever you last uploaded. This custom method is also how you upload maps onto boards. Go to components, custom, and drag the board onto the table, using the same method as before to browse for your map file and upload it. You can unlock it with the toggles or L and use plus or minus to size the board. When you have a table full of players, someone is bound to hit L on the map board when they meant to do it on their character. To avoid this, use this fancy little scripted piece by placing it on your board. Once you have touched it to an object, that object will no longer be able to be selected until you reload the table. Never place two of these scripted pieces together or they will be stuck for eternity. Beware the dreaded flip button. To disallow your players from using it, go to Options, Permissions, and Deselect Table Flip. It should be noted that if you want your players to be able to spawn in saved objects, you will have to promote them, which will give them permissions to flip the table regardless. So you better trust them. If you're the DM setting up the table and you have it prepared for your session, go to Games, Save and Load, and select the green save game button. Name your table and you will have it prepared to load for your game. You can create folders for organizing here and to load the table you can select the save game and hit load. When I first started TTS I used 3D assets for everything including battle maps and figures but a lot of the assets were from people's workshop uploads that didn't update them and that would cause a lot of pieces not to load when it came time to run my session. So I decided to simplify things and upload my own assets to run everything 2D which has been working really well. If you're interested in using 3D assets feel free to search the workshop or if you're a big brain, create and upload your own. You can use dice rollers from the default components, hitting R to roll them, but I found it a lot easier to use these dice rollers. You can program them by selecting the dice and modifier and name the roller, clicking on an empty slot. By default I have the rollers on this table set up with the numbers equaling the modifier to a d20. These rollers work on a random generator but take a second or so to reload a different number, so make sure you aren't double clicking or you'll get the same generation. Two things I forgot to mention are lighting. You go to options, lighting, and you can make it totally dark like this and you will need a light source such as the torch to reveal the area. You can also change the color of the light and you can always reset it. Another thing 
I meant to mention is whenever you're rolling initiative, you can use this edit note in the bottom right and do around one, player one, 16, player two, 14, enemies or mobs, six, depending on what initiative the roll. And you can also use this to keep other notes as well. I hope you have found this video helpful and are inspired to play and or run D&D as I have done for the past several years. If you have any thoughts, tips, comments, or questions, feel free to leave them below. I've spent countless hours on these 2D resources for my workshop uploads, and if you'd be interested in supporting me financially, let me know in the comments and I'll set something up. But as of right now, I have 30 subscribers and don't find it necessary to have a Patreon or anything. Consider subscribing to catch future videos, and if you want to hit me up on Discord, join my server. Link in the description below, along with all the other resources I've mentioned in this video. I appreciate you watching all the way through. Slim Jones, out.